Pressure Vessel Inspection Code, In-Service Inspection, Rating, Repair, and Alteration. Now it is very important, to start by figuring out the contents of this standard. So, this API standards consists of 9 sections, and 5 appendices. These contents are represent as, scope, references, definitions, responsibilities, inspection, intervals and extent, analysis and recording, repair and alteration etc. And finally, alternative rules for exploration and production. When we talk about scope, simply means which vessels will be covered, who will be authorized to apply or use it, what if there is a conflict with or deviation from regulatory, what about specific applications or exclusions. Obviously, this inspection code applies to all refining and chemical process vessels that have been placed in service, as well as pressure relieving devices, which protecting these vessels. So, if we tried to define which vessel shall be covered, we can say, those vessels constructed in accordance with an applicable construction code, or without a construction code or approved based upon jurisdiction acceptance, or vessel fabricated to a recognized construction code, but has lost its nameplate or stamping. This slide, showing two examples of vessels, with, and, without nameplate. We will find, that as me and other construction codes, were written for new construction, while API 510 was written for in-service activities, so, why we have to include ASME code in this course? The reason, that most of the technical requirements for design, welding, non-destructive examination, and materials can be applied to the inspection, rating, repair, and alteration of in-service pressure vessels. And finally, if some of the technical requirements for design, material, fabrication, welding, non-destructive examination and inspection, cannot follow ASME code, then they shall conform to API 510 requirements. The application of this inspection code, is restricted to owner, or users that employ, or have access to the following, a an authorized inspection agency, b. a repair organization, c. an engineer, d. an inspector, and, e. examiners. Adoption and use of this inspection code, does not, permit its use, in conflict with any prevailing regulatory requirements. However, if the requirements of this code, are more stringent than the requirements of the regulation, then the requirements of this code shall govern. The following pressure vessels, are excluded from the specific requirements of this inspection code. A. Pressure vessels on movable structures, covered by other jurisdictional regulations. B. All classes of containers, listed for exemption in the scope of the applicable construction code c. Pressure vessels that, do not exceed specified volumes and pressures. For more clarification, the following photos showing these various types, liquefied natural gas ship, mobile air receiver, trucks tank, movable tank, FPSO pressure vessels. Also, direct and indirect process fired heaters, air or liquid accumulators, and pressure vessels for human occupancy, for space or underwater. This inspection code, recognizes fitness for service concepts, for evaluating in-service damage of pressure containing components.
API 579 provides detailed assessment procedures for specific types of damage that are referenced in this code. Also, this inspection code recognizes risk based inspection RBI, concepts for determining inspection intervals. And API 580 provides guidelines for conducting a risk based assessment. In this episode, we will discuss Section 5, for inspection, examination and pressure testing practices. The easiest way to be versed in all subsections, you can consider the following consecutive steps, in accordance with the common rule, plan, do, check, act. Therefore, from the RBI assessment we will get an inspection plan, and prepare for inspection. Then we will do the recommended type of inspection for specific damage mechanisms on specific locations, welds, or flange joints, and pressure testing. However, for check and do activities, will be discussed later, on next sections. If we look at the definition of inspection plan, it is a strategy defining how and when a pressure vessel, or pressure relieving device will be inspected, repaired, or maintained. Let's proceed, for more clarification. An inspection plan shall be established, for all pressure vessels, and pressure relieving devices within the scope of this code. The inspection plan, should be developed by an inspector, or engineer, 